Is that the face of a terrorist that they had to know where that cash came from? Again, it's turning more into fascism. It's one thing for them to make sure you don't have a gun or a bomb in your pocket. It's another thing for them to not like a book. Uh, you know, this uh, shows you the danger of profiling. Maybe uh, he was profiled because he had, uh, had a Ron Paul bumper sticker. An anti-tax demonstration is scheduled for downtown's Keener Plaza April 15th. But charges are flying that one of the organizing groups is an extremist anti-government group. The Southern Poverty Law Center and the Anti-Defamation League have their own opinions about the Constitution Party. I think we'd consider it a, a fringe right-wing political party uh, that we consider to have... Uh, extremist roots. When we talk about the New World Order, it is um, mimicking, if not um, duplicating, uh, language that comes out of organized white supremacy. The elites have said that they want to have a final revolution, that they know the public's going to revolt against them, so that's why they've scientifically set up the surveillance grid, the cashless society. This whole continuity of government system is designed to suppress and control the people of America. Northcom, the Pentagon, the military are all announcing their number one job now is fighting the American people. They're saying the number one terror threat is veterans and gun owners and conservatives and libertarians and Ron Paul supporters. And I've been sent secret army documents, we call the phone numbers and they're accurate and real, where I'm being watched at In the Fed protest, where we peacefully go out and demonstrate. And now even the ACLU has written letters saying, why is the Pentagon watching U.S. citizens? Why are you listing any protest as an act of terrorism? The real terrorists are the people that have hijacked our nation that would dare say the First Amendment is terrorism. Two new reports out document an alarming rise in the number of hate groups in the United States. The Southern Poverty Law Center's intelligence report found 926 active hate groups in the country. That's up more than 50 percent from just 2,000. Morris Dees is the founder of the Southern Poverty Law Center. He joins us from Montgomery, Alabama. Good morning, sir. Your report dovetails with a brand new uh, report from the Department of Homeland Security claiming basically the same thing. And they say part of it is because of the election of President Obama. Other part of the responsibility goes to the deteriorating economy. Uh, political climate, the election of Obama, the uh, immigration issues that have faced the United States over the last five to ten years, and, and now especially the economy, is almost causing a resurgence of what we saw in the days of Timothy McVeigh, almost a, a militia uh, movement that's being uh, reborn in the United States. Homeland Security says people who oppose abortion or worry about the threat of illegal aliens could pose a radical threat to America. It warns about groups and individuals dedicated to single issues like abortion, immigration, and gun rights, and even raises a red flag about veterans returning home from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Does this report seem to lump in ordinary Americans who have real concerns about stuff with nutjob racists and anti-Semites? Uh, there's one thing that's glaringly missing here, no discussion about the real terrorists. Uh, the Al Qaeda cell groups and others that are located inside the United it's States. It's all about domestic. It's the most, it's, it's, it's the, the most it, dangerous. It literally changes the entire focus for the Department of Homeland Correct. Security has been doing. I was passed by an Oklahoma City police officer vehicle. And they slowed down, got in behind me, followed me for about three miles, and then uh, pulled me over. When the officers approached my vehicle, um, they asked me if I knew why I was being pulled over, and I said, no, I had no idea, and they said, it's because of the sign in the back of your truck, and I said, my sign that says abort Obama, not the unborn, and the officers um, said, yes, that's why. Later that afternoon, I got a call from the Secret Service. Um, they wanted to uh, do a quick walkthrough of my house to make sure I wasn't some kind of radical racist. Why would Americans, under the guise and the threat of worldwide terrorism, why would they willingly give up or relinquish their rights to government when the rights, our rights did not come from government in the first place? Our rights merely came from God. They were enumerated by the government, put in the Bill of Rights, as a reminder not to us, uh, but uh, those in power as to not violate them. 
and I know the history of government, not just American government, but the history of government well enough to know that most governments acquire power and they do not like dissent. We've, we are losing our freedoms in the United States. Uh, most Americans do not realize that we have free speech zones in the United States. I mean, talk about an oxymoron. You know, all of the 50 states are a free speech zone. You're an American. That, that, by definition, creates a free speech zone. We have freedom of speech because we stand up and say what we think, not because the Founding Fathers ratified the First Amendment in 1791. So if we're losing the free speech zones, the governments in general throughout history have tried to quell dissent by controlling the media, which we already have in this country, and by generating fear of confrontation. After Seattle, the Fed said, we can't allow protests anymore in America. It's too dangerous. That's why we're going to have free speech zones miles away from where the events are in baseball fields and church parking lots where nobody can see you or hear you. You've got your First Amendment, but you've got it way over here miles away. That all started as a beta test in Seattle in 99 with the police, after they'd staged the riots with hired anarchists, coming up to people saying nowhere in the city could they even wear a pin saying no WTO. And the police say, hey, First Amendment is suspended in Seattle and the news pushed it like it was a good idea and the right thing to do. And the lines are open. This is first word, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at 877-367-2526. Uh, uh, whatever's in your head, call and share it at this moment. Hello. Yeah, how you doing, Alan? This is, my name's Austin from Florida. I was recently uh, looking around on the Army's website, Army.mil, and I came across this document called the Civilian Inmate Labor Program. This was put on 2005, and I was just like reading over the first couple pages. Just in the first couple pages, this document on the Army's own website talks about converting military bases and installations into giant prisons and establishing civilian inmate labor programs. Have you ever heard of this? No. This is on army.mil if you yeah. want to look it okay. up. It's on another, another conspiracy theory. This is on the Army's website, yeah. sir. All right, so rather than to be in prison, right? They're going to have prison Well, I, I don't know, but, I mean, obviously there's a document that... Has a yeah, there are lots of documents in lots of places. But uh, this is on the military's own website. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Army.mil. Okay. I'm at army.mil. Um, it says the link's broken. There's no such army.mil. Can you get to army... I can't get to army.mil. Army Regulation 210-35. Now, this was set up in 1986 secretly. And for 10 plus years, it was secret. And in 1997, Bill Clinton declassified this, and we were the first major radio show to cover it. Since then, it's been expanded. This lists 12 camps to hold American citizens that have been built by the United States Army. And ladies and gentlemen, some of these facilities have U.S. citizens in them now. But it's all being done administratively. To beta test the Army running camps, they did deals with the federal government and now states to take prisoners convicted in the civilian courts and to then stick them on U.S. military bases administered by the Bureau of Prisons, but operated by the U.S. Army. So see, they're taking state and federal prisoners and sticking them under Army control and building these civilian inmate labor camps all under Rex 84, right out in the open, and no media will ever touch this. Beginning in October, the Army plans to station an active unit inside the United States. Under NORTHCOM and under the new Homeland Brigade, it was first going to be 3,000, and then 20,000, and then 40,000. The 3rd Infantry Division's 1st Brigade Combat Team has spent 35 of the last 60 months in Iraq. Combat-hardened troops who've been running camps and centers in Iraq 
are now coming back to the United States to, quote, carry out law enforcement actions. The Army unit may be called upon to help with civil unrest and crowd control. There has been some concern and some misimpressions that, that I'd like to correct. Um, the primary purpose of this force is to provide help to people in need in the aftermath of a, a WMD-like event in the homeland. This force has got no role in uh, civil disturbance or civil unrest, any of those kinds of things. The Army Times reporting, quote, they may be called upon to help with civil unrest and crowd control or to deal with potentially horrific scenarios, end quote. NORTHCOM, the Northern Command uh, that came into being in October of 2002, uh, when that came in, people uh, like me were concerned that the Pentagon was going to use its forces here in the United States, and now it looks like, in fact, it is, even though on its website it says it doesn't have units of its own. Now it's getting a unit of its own. And the Army Times said during civil unrest inside the United States that the Army's new job would be engaging the American people. The Posse Comitatus Act of 1878 generally prohibits